Hello, my name is Filippo Spantekis, and I'll be presenting our work on massively parallel 3SAT solving and our approach to um, designing a hybrid GPU accelerated solver. So starting off with a brief introduction to the problem of uh, Boolean satisfiability or SAT, um, the problem is to decide if a propositional formula can be satisfied. Uh, it is the first and p-complete problem and a very important one in computer science. And it comes in a number of different variations, such as MaxSat, AllSat, 3SAT, and many more. But our focus today will be 3SAT. So in 3SAT, formulae are represented in 3CNF, which is uh, the conjunctive normal form. Um, and a formula in 3CNF is basically a conjunction of clauses where each clause consists of exactly three literals. And the literal is either a variable or its negation. Now, Moving on to a few words on GPU acceleration. Um, by this, we mean to use a general purpose graphics processing unit, or GPGPU, and its associated strengths, such as its uh, great arithmetic throughput and the massively parallel environment it offers, in order to perform a computation more quickly. Um, this is done with computing platforms, compute platforms such as NVIDIA's Compute Unified Device Architecture, or CUDA, um, which is what we are using but there is a number of them available, different across different vendors and so on. Now, unlike conventional platforms where threads can run different tasks independently, in CUDA, threads have to be performing an identical tasks. Um, so they are grouped into blocks, and blocks are multidimensional. They can be one, two, or three dimensions. And identical blocks are then further grouped into a grid. And once again, grids can be one, two, or three dimensional. Now, all this grouping is useful for tasks that exhibit special locality, but for tasks that don't, um, it just impacts the way they can access different types of memory. So for example, uh, a thread has access to its own registers, which is a very restricted memory, but also very quick to access. Um, and threads within the same block can also use shared memory between them, which is again, very quick to access, but also fairly size limited. Um, but if threads need to communicate across different blocks, then they would need to go through uh, global memory, which is the biggest type of memory uh, and resides off chip. So it's the DRAM chips on the graphics card. Um, but this is very, very slow to access. So generally it is avoided unless certain access um, uh, requirements are met to make it quicker. So with that in mind, generally approaches where there is a lot of communication between threads or a tightly coupled um, are avoided. A loosely coupled approaches are much better on the GPU. Now, regarding related work, uh, there's been a number of efforts that have been made, um, such as CUD at SAT, which is a DPLL solver that runs exclusively on the GPU. This was by Alessandro, Dal Palu, and et al. Um, there's been a backtracking 3 SAT solver, which again runs exclusively on the GPU, and this was by Quirin Mayer et al. And as of recently, there was a paper on accelerating in processing during a on, with a GPU um, during a intelligent search on the CPU, and this was by Mohamed Osama et al. Now, when solvers are designed on the GPU, generally um, portfolio approaches are not so uh, easy to implement because uh, GPUs are data parallel, and running multiple tasks, multiple different tasks on them at the same time is not really efficient. So generally, solvers are search-based splitting, and our approach falls into this category too. Um, but unlike existing work, our aim is to design a hybrid solver where the GPU just naively but quickly tackles sub-problems while the CPU is performing the intelligent search. Um, it's also been observed that uh, a long time is spent deciding the last few variables in intelligent search. Um, and our approach is to design that hybrid solver uh, to run on both platforms, where more specifically, uh, the CPU component uh, uses an optimized algorithm to perform the search. And at a certain cutoff point, um, the CPU component transfers a partial assignment to the GPU component, which then attempts to find the last, uh, few, the assignment to the last few variables that remain very quickly. And this happens at the same time. So the CPU continues the search, GPU continues its own search, and they work in parallel. Now, um, currently what we are presenting is the GPU component, and we haven't done the CPU component yet. 
So for the GPU component, uh, we're going to work through a visual example to see how it works. So let's say we have an input formula such as this, which is represented in DIMAX format. Um, we take this formula and place it into the global memory of the GPU in a certain structure that uh, meets alignment requirements and makes it easier to access quickly from the threads. Um, and then in terms of solving, um, we have an input partial assignment that comes from the CPU. Uh, in this example, we're just setting six, uh, the, the var variable six to one or true and seven to zero or false. Um, and then implicitly, um, we have a collection of other assignments that are yet to be tried. So assignments to the remaining um, variables which have not been tried. Um, and what we do is we distribute the search effort across a fixed number of threads. So in this example, I picked eight, but normally it's in the regions of thousands. Um, and each thread takes a small part, portion or range of the um, collection A. So in this case, T1 or thread one will take the, assign the assignments A1 to A4 and it's going to try them. Um, T2 is going to take A5 to A8 and so on. Um, in terms of representation, the input partial assignment is stored in global memory and is represented as a vector of uh, bit pairs where the values 0, 1 represent truth. So uh, setting uh, the variable 6 to true would have uh, 0, 1 at the respective index. Um, 1, 0 represents false or 0, and then 0, 0 represents unset. And in term on the thread local assignment or the assignment of each thread, this is a 64 bit word that is in the registers of each thread. Um, and each bit corresponds to one unset literal and sorry variable. So um, that means that at index uh, zero, the that would be the first unset um, variable. At index one, it would be the second, so on and so forth. And a thread basically tries this assignment, and once time comes to go to the next assignment, all it has to do is add one to that 64-bit word uh, to advance to the next assignment. And this happens on a scale of thousands at the same time. Um, we have performed a number of tests, and here are the results. So what we did was generate random instances of uh, unsatisfiable inputs um, with a variable number of variables and clauses, and see how the C GPU would perform on them, how quickly it can do it. Uh, now, this is not yet a complete solver, so we're not arguing that this is comparable to other solvers, but it is what we're using to gauge how well it is doing. Um, what we observed is high efficiency from the GPU side, so a large number of checks being done at the same time. Um, and we had also run these results on the CPU to gather an idea of how different the two devices are. And we got much, much slower results with the same approach. But we're not arguing that the two are comparable, so we, we're not sure if we can compare between CPU and GPU because they're very different devices, and we don't know if two devices are equivalent in terms of their characteristics. So we are still looking for a way to get results on either device and still manage to produce benchmarks which can compare the two. Um, and if anyone has any suggestions on this, we'd be glad to hear them. Um, but it seems that the current approach has a promise uh, for something in the future. So what we're planning to do is implement a CPU component, the CPU component of the solver. And then this can be done by either using a modified solver, intelligent solver such as Minisat, um, or by a new DPLL solver, for example. Um, and then we're going to focus on optimizing the GPU component a bit more for the new uh, microarchitectures that have arisen. And finally, we want to gather real life test data and then be able to compare with existing solvers and gauge the performance. So thank you very much for your attention and big thanks to the organizers for organizing this um, doctoral program. Thank you.